So this is Good Friday. It's going to be a little different service. We have some special things going on. Your role in tonight's service is to participate in spirit, in voice, and just allow the story of Christ's sacrifice for us to be told again. For our salvation, may also glory in his call to take up our cross and follow him. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. When Jesus went before the, the high priest, there were others present. Let's hear from one of them now. We didn't want to kill him, but we had no choice. Nobody understands how precarious our position was. They thought their hair-splitting debates were all that mattered. But we had the temple to worry about built at great cost it was all we had left what would you have thought had we risked this great building to just to save some backwoods preacher he wasn't the first one every few years they came to town making promises they couldn't keep they left as quickly as they came and we'd have to deal with the chaos they left behind they thought it was their business to criticize us. But we had to preserve order. How could they have, if, they, if we had not preserved order, how could they have preached? Of course, there were ample grounds for complaint. We knew that better than they. The income from our estates had fallen off precipitously since the Romans had come. But when we resisted, they just sent more soldiers and it was only worse. It's irresponsible to upset people like that, starting these silly little revolts as though survival doesn't matter. We existed because the Romans permitted us to exist, and the temple was open only because we cooperated with the military. There was no other way. Would you have let him dismantle society and then rebuild it in, with some new way without any proof of his credentials? We hadn't survived all these centuries taking rash and dangerous risks like that. The temple was entrusted to us and we intended to pass it on intact and unchanged. Now, once before, it had been destroyed when our forebearers did not obey the laws. And we did not intend for that error to happen again. Of course, we would have, pre we would have preferred being spared this unpleasant duty. Indeed, we had tried repeatedly to urge him to moderation. There was no reason he couldn't continue his good works among the sick, but he would not compromise. He seemed to believe there was some new way to order the world. Exactly what it was, we didn't know, much less whether it would work. And so, we had to remove him from the scene. Had we not done so, we ourselves would have been killed. And what good would that have done anyone? Agreed, it was a messy and disreputable affair. But what other choice did we have except to give up our authority and follow him ourselves? We make our living making things. Sure, we'd rather make baby cribs and ox yokes, but that's not what they want. We gotta pay for our food too, you know. And they don't ask if you want to, they just tell you. The Romans
Romans like their crosses big and heavy. The colonel told my dad they're supposed to scare people. You have to find a really big tree and then cut it just right. The whole family worked on it all week. We were all sorts of proud when we got it done. Then the soldiers came and paid us. We got busy making other stuff, you know, and we didn't think about it anymore. Until that morning, I was cleaning up after Passover. There was a lot of noise outside, and this crowd. There were all kinds of people heading towards the cemetery. Some were soldiers, but mostly people were just watching. And in the middle, there was this guy carrying a cross. First, they have to kill you with a whip. Then they make you carry your own cross. People stand around making fun. They do it all the time. But this time was different. I saw that it was our cross. You could tell the way we cut the wood, the way we fastened it together. And the guy carrying it, I kind of recognized him too. He was all bloody, laying on the ground. But you could tell he's the rabbi everybody's been talking about. Some say he's the one we're waiting for to be free. Everybody says he helps people. And when he talks, it just makes sense. And now, here he is with the soldiers beating on him and our people making fun of him. You could see he couldn't go on. But then the soldiers grabbed this guy out of the crowd and made him carry it instead. Since it was our cross, I decided to follow along just to see what would happen. And it was terrible. First, they take off all of your clothes, pound nails through your hands, and you hang there naked, dying with a rope around your chest. Only low-class people, like slaves, they do that too. Or to dangerous people who are trying to start a revolution. His mother was there watching. That's what got me the most. I wanted to tell her I was sorry, us making his cross and all. But what was I supposed to say? If we hadn't made it, they would have killed us. And what good would that have done anybody? When I got home, everybody asked me where I was. I didn't want to tell them, but I had to. I said I was watching Jesus die on our cross. The scripture that tells us the story of Jesus' sacrifice for us on the cross is found in all four Gospels. Tonight I'm going to share it with you from the Gospel of John, chapter 18, 16 through 30. John, 6, John 18, 16 through 30. high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I've always taught in the synagogues in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. So why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard what I have said to them. For they know what I've said. 
When he had said these things, one of the officers standing, standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If what I said is wrong, bear witness about the wrong. But if what I said is right, why do you strike me? And it's then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. So they said to him, You also are, aren't you not one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not one of the servants of the high priest, a relative, the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it, and at once a rooster crowed. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas so the governor's, to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled, but could eat Passover. So Pilate went outside and said, What accusations do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken of what kind of death he would meet. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord? Or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not of this world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is the truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I should release one for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you this king of the Jews? They cried out again, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, king of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am, I am bringing him to you that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, we have a law, and according to that law, we ought to, he ought to die because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, Will you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. 
From then on, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a, a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement. And in Aramaic, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about sixth, the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is, Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but rather, this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fill the scripture that says, they've divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Make no mistake, it was people that killed Jesus. They didn't have to. They had to to fulfill Scripture. But God gave his people a way around this from the beginning of time. It was called obedience and trust and love. But on Good Friday, we remember the failures of humanity. And the result of those failures was the death of God himself on our behalf. There's a tradition, although not always practiced in the church, where we come together on Good Friday and we hear the reproaches of Jesus, the laments against his faithless church. So we're going to pause and I will read the laments that have been passed down for hundreds and hundreds of years. And after each one, I'll, I will signal you with a raised hand, and you will say those words together. Holy God, mighty and loving, have mercy upon us. Let's try that one time now. Holy God, mercy upon us. Mercy upon us. Now let us hear these. Christ's lament against his faithless church. 
Oh, my people, oh, my church, what have I done to you? Or in what way have I offended you? I led you forth from the land of Egypt and delivered you to the waters of baptism. But you have prepared a cross for your Savior. I led you through the desert for 40 years and fed you with manna. I brought you through times of persecution and of renewal and gave you my body, the bread of heaven. But you have prepared a cross for your Savior. I made you branches of my vineyard and gave you the water of salvation. But when I was thirsty, you gave me vinegar and gall and pierced with a side, with a spear, the side of your Savior. I went before you in a pillar of cloud. But you have led me to the judgment hall of Pilate. I brought you to a land of freedom and prosperity. But you have scourged, mocked, and beaten me. I gave you a royal scepter and bestowed the keys to the kingdom but you have given me a crown of thorns. I raised you on high with great power, but you hanged me on the cross. My peace I give you, which the world cannot give, and I washed your feet as a servant, but you draw the sword to strike my name and seek high places in my kingdom. I accepted the cup of suffering and death for your sakes, but you scatter and deny and abandon me. I sent the spirit of truth to lead you but you chose your hearts to guidance. I called you to go and bring forth fruit, but you cast lots for my clothing. I pray that you all may be one, but you continue to quarrel and divide. I grafted you into the tree of my chosen people, Israel. But you turned on them with persecution and mass murder. I made you joint heirs with them of my covenants. But you made them scapegoats for your own guilt. I came to you as the least of your brothers and sisters. I was hungry, but you gave me no food. Thirsty, but you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, but you did not welcome me. Naked, but you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, but you did not visit me. Let us pray. Lord, these words strike a nerve. It's hard for them to even roll off of our tongues. It hurts our ears to hear the confessions and pleas and accusations. But we admit you must lament your church. 
you must lament the failures. So our prayer is that you also, and we know you are, celebrating the victories. We ask that among our failures, we do please you. That amidst the, the thorns, our lives become roses. We pray that you continue to guide us and in light of your great sacrifice, we will live with honor and glory and be for your kingdom, the people you call us to be. So in preparation for our victorious lives in your name, we do ask for your forgiveness as we reflect on your great sacrifice. We ask you now to reveal to our hearts how we may sacrifice for you. What are you calling us to give? How are you calling us to love? O precious Savior who gave all for us, we give our lives to you. These things we pray in the name of God, the Father Almighty. You, our Savior Jesus Christ, in this very real and present spirit. Amen. I'm about to sing our favorite song of the church, inappropriate for the night, the old rugged cross. At the end of the song, the last chorus, we will sing a cappella. Kevin and I will traditionally, as we do on Good Friday, drape the table with a black cloth, this signifies the stone rolling to seal our dead Lord in the tomb. And with that on our mind, with the sacrifice of Jesus, Jesus on our minds, we will depart in silence. Now the lights will go down. Just give it a minute. We'll bring the lights up and you will depart. Grab your sign and put it in the yard. So I'll cherish the old.